But at the time, did the police cover it up? Katie Razzell has been to Stockholm to find out more, and there are some flashing images in her report. We Are Stockholm is a music festival for teenagers in the town centre, devised 16 years ago to keep kids out of trouble. But for the last two summers, some of the people it was designed to help have used it as an opportunity for something more sinister. It looks a little different in the snow, but this is where the festival happened and where teenage girls say they were groped, harassed and even raped by young men, allegedly in the main young Afghan asylum seekers. But it's taken five months and the events in Germany for the story to emerge because although the police were aware of the crimes, they didn't make them public. And that's left this country that's always prided itself on its welcoming, open attitudes to refugees, grappling with some awkward questions. It was a cover-up, wasn't it? No, we didn't cover up, of course we didn't. But we didn't tell. And there are so many things we don't tell, because uh, we have so much information, so much things going on, we have hundreds of cases every 24 hours, and in this case, we didn't tell. And that was a mistake, a big mistake today. But of course it wasn't a cover-up. So if girls, teenage girls, had reported sexual assaults by white Swedes at this event, would you have taken the same decision? Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is that we never, in the police, we never talk about if there are Swedes or if they come from any other parts. The media does, but we don't. At the 170,000 strong festival in 2014, 17 teenagers said they'd been sexually attacked and one complained of rape. A year later, there were 19 assaults and one rape. One person is being prosecuted. These guys, they were like 5, 10, 15 sometimes. The only goal for them to, to go into the, this crowd is to sexually harass uh, these young girls. Roger Tequalu set up the festival and still runs it for Stockholm City Council. Uh, and in the beginning, it looks like they're having just fun and, you know, dancing in, in, in this huge uh, crowd of people. And then uh, what happens is that they surround them and start to gather around them and then suddenly they start to uh, sexually harass them, you know, touching breasts, uh, the crouch and, and stuff like that. For some, Swedish culture is under threat. For others, the ethnic background of the assailants is irrelevant. What's clear is that Swedes don't know which way to turn, having taken in more refugees per head of population than any other European country. The man in charge of policing the festival said this week they'd worried about talking about the assailants' backgrounds for fear of playing into the hands of the Swedish Democrats. They're the anti-immigration party riding high in the polls right now. It, it's just wrong. They shouldn't in any way let political views affect their work, what they report or not. Young men in group treating this as some kind of fun way to spend an evening or to go to a party and, and just pick out women and harass them in group, rape them in group. That's definitely nothing that has been existing here before. Uh, so you do blame migrants more generally? For these kinds of assaults, I, I blame the culture they come from and I blame the fact that they don't uh, want to accept that in Sweden we have a completely different view of women. Sweden's policy towards migrants has seen an about turn. This refugee centre used to offer advice to up to a thousand refugees a day. Since the government closed the border this month, it's down to 20. Right-wing groups blame cultural differences for the New Year attacks in Cologne and the assaults at Stockholm's festivals. But here, they reject that kind of stereotyping. I might be naive, I don't know, but uh, I still don't see it as uh, anything to have to do with cultural differences or religions and so forth. It's individual uh, acting upon themselves and behaving, misbehaving. And what should Sweden do about it? Take them to justice, just as anyone else. In Sweden, it's the police who are under flak. And in this unashamedly liberal nation, there's been some soul searching about their approach. So if it isn't a cover-up, what might explain this not emerging for so long? Well, I think we all carry a, a bit of self-censorship, that we are afraid of discussing these questions because you can appear like a racist. And this is a cultural thing for us. We don't, we don't go there. We don't go in that, what we say, dark places. And that's a, maybe a problem for Swedes. That report from Katie Razzle in Stockholm. Now, what happens if war or global warming threatens the key?